Hello everyone, welcome to Sandbox! I hope you haven't missed Yay. us too much. Yeah, I'm sure everyone has missed us supremely. Uh, the internet's been falling apart without us. Um, shout out to Big Naz, um, our biggest uh, podcast uh, watcher. Um, yeah. Apologies. For any reason? Really? I don't know, well shout out for being an avid fan. Um, yeah. For for having the greatest thumbs um, for fighting games uh, in the world, um, and yeah. also just just shout out, man! Just shout, shout out, out. <laughs> Big Nash. Big yeah, Naz. he was he was there for our live stream. He was there for our podcast, and he's got the fastest thumbs in and, the West. And he's 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 here. He, he's in, he, in he's here with us today. So I'm going to talk about and what Jamie. I'm if you look to the door, welcome. No, he's not really here because of COVID. But hey, you know what? Maybe a uh, maybe one of our biggest fans' dreams may come true. Maybe maybe Big Naz will show up at your house. Of of course, you'd have to be in the um, the the VIP uh, Patreon. Obviously, yeah, that's obviously, true, that's true. Oh, everyone knows subscriptions. That. So Jamie, what are you drinking today? Before you ask me, I'm drinking something that is. Uh, I'm probably not gonna like, uh, but oh, oh I, it's the weirdest one I've got. Well, yeah, okay. Expect the unexpected. Oh, it's called cucumelon sour, and it's a lot of a lot of words there. If you didn't guess it from the name, uh, it's made with. Um, something called uh, Heel Melon Hops, which is hops that taste like melon, um, yeah. and cucumber. They just put cucumber in the beer. Well, I expected the unexpected, but I, did, I still didn't expect that. <sighs> what are you drinking? I mean, cucumber and melon sounds sounds good. Just the sour not bit. Beer. The sour bit is what's um, it, mm. the sour bit makes it go from being a beer slash edible drink to to vinegar literally vinegar yeah <laughs> I can smell it already what melon or sour cucumber taste like this is like a really it's just oh sour beers I, I kind of half get it kind of half don't it smells like the beer has gone off um kind of because that's exactly how you make it yeah ooh is this one you got from your subscription, or did you seek this out this actively? Is, this is a subscription. Subscription uh, beers. That seems right. I wouldn't have massively expected you to uh, to go for that one. Hey, hmm? that's pretty good. Hey, that's pretty good. Hmm. You did an eye dubs meme. Hmm. Well, that's all good. It, it's, it's good you had that little surprise. What would you rate it out of it's, seven? It's really cucumbery. Oh, well, that does sound good. Although I still can't picture a cucumber beer, but I like cucumber and I like beer, so I don't really see what could be not to like. I'd give it five cucumbers out of melon. Five out of seven? Out of melon. That's a perfect score. Can I, um... <laughs> should I tell you about my drink? Go on, then. <laughs> Oh, you, 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 you laughing getting ready on, for me to announce something very unexciting well it may not be um, cucumber melon beer and I may have gone out of focus but um, I am drinking Tesco's own gin Ooh. however Ooh. I've mixed it not only with lemonade but also a smidge of lime so you know I'm making it a bit fancy oh. it tastes good more than a bit and fancy gin is is really good for you it's like eating celery <laughs> botanicals in it yeah so um so that's me I give this gin a 6 for charm and that's the only rating I'm willing to give a 6 for Tesco's gin for charm yeah, yeah, yeah. wow I need to see it that it does what it says on the bottle well <laughs> I don't doubt that <laughs> right Right. So, there's a lot. There's a, there's a load of things happened, but and we got two weeks to catch up on. But we're gonna make it seem like nothing happened here. So, the PlayStation Five, yeah, and the Xbox Series X box art has been shown. 
I actually haven't seen this. So it's my catchphrase. For those who are listening and not watching, uh, the the PlayStation Five it has a it's it, it's kind of hideous actually. Um, it's the ordinary blue PS4 box, except now it has a white PlayStation Five banner where the PlayStation Four banner used to be. Oh, I see it. So, uh, whereas it could I mean, look cool if it was all white, it's yeah, I don't white get why it's all white. Why include any blue? Yeah, the console includes no blue. The console is has blue lights on it, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess, but I don't know. Kind of a weird choice. I think it looks really like bad. You need to minimise the amount of colours you have, like on the default parts of the box, because then the game's <laughs> itself box art is more likely to clash if you have loads of colours on there. Yeah. If you just made it all black and white, you can stick any colour box art on there, and it's not going to look too jarring with just black and white. It's, yeah, Maybe. I mean, I think. Yeah, I don't know why you'd go for multiple colours like that. I think it looks pretty shocking, yeah. Uh, I don't think it looks that bad, but I do think the blue is a weird choice. Almost and like again, they just kind of... don't want us to buy the boxes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's just their way around it. Make the boxes hideous, <laughs> they won't buy them. Saving the planet one box at a time. Um, the Xbox Series X is a lot more interesting to talk about, though. Ooh. Because there is no Xbox Series X box. It's just Xbox. And there's a little label on the box which says this game has been optimised for Series X. But the whole the game, the box that you're buying, can also be played on an Xbox One. Oh, that's quite interesting then. Mm. So are all Xbox Series X games going to run on an Xbox One? See, this is this is where it gets interesting <laughs> because yeah. their messaging has been very mixed. So, yeah, initially. They were like, we want, we view, you know, this is the Xbox One. This is one system for all, you know, that whole thing. Yeah. And they want, they, that whole spiel. they want it, all the games to be backwards compatible. And so you have like Xbox One will look awful and then you'll have the Series X will look good. And then mm. uh, they're, it's like heavily, heavily, heavily rumored to the point of being confirmed. Um, that they're going to reveal an Xbox Series S um, yeah. next month, which will bridge the gap. It's a bit weird because it's like you've got the you've got the Xbox One, the Xbox One S, the Xbox One X, the Xbox Series S, and the Xbox Series X, <laughs> and just the original <laughs> Xbox. Now that is wild. Uh, no, I mean, w- I feel. I just feel really sorry for all the grandmas out there trying to buy their kid a console. I imagine it though, because it's <laughs> like they'll look at it and be like, "Oh, well, this plays all the other games, and it's like uh, less than half the price." I mean, I'm getting this one, right? Yeah. And then you have the S- Xbox Series S, which is rumored to be, in terms of like power, it's rumored to be. It's really weird. It has the CP. It has the same CPU as the Series X. But it has a worse GPU than the X. Not Series X, the, the X. X. What a bloody confusing thing. It's like Wii U, but like a hundred times worse. It is. The whole marketing around Xbox is so nonsensical. <laughs> like, who's coming up with these names? I, I Just don't name it like understand. the Xbox 2. <laughs> I know that shit, but at least we make sense. I don't know what's happening anymore. I can't keep up. I don't. And I'm an epic gamer. I I don't understand it at all. I don't. There'll be no confusion if you call it the Xbox Two. You, you can still have it be backwards compatible. Mm. You just they they've already they don't call the box boxes Xbox One anymore. 
they just call them Xbox games, right? Mm. So you can still do that, but why Series X? Like that sounds so crap. Yeah, it's so bizarre. Also, the fact that I've googled box art just makes this even funnier because it's like Xbox Series Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> So many boxes! <laughs> <laughs> so many X's and boxes. And then you've if also there's got... a series of boxes, it would be the Xbox Series Xbox oh. series. <laughs> but then you've got the confusing thing of... Okay, this is another thing to rope in. So, yeah. some companies, EA, have said there's going to be a, a, a £10 fee to upgrade to the next-gen version. Yeah. How does that work? If it's already the next gen version by default, uh, they just they just kind of like you just look in your bank account and EA have taken ten pound at some point. Just, they don't tell you. They just kind of like, ah, he, he probably owns the new console by now. Minus ten pound from EA. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> probably some subscription service I forgot about. Whoops. It just says nothing personal, kid. <laughs> Oh man, this is all very confusing and hurting my brain. Right, okay. And then also, games are going to get more. more expensive. Yeah. I think it's NBA. The next NBA game. It's uh, it's seventy. I don't know what it is in pounds. I haven't looked. It's seventy dollars as opposed to the usual sixty dollars that has been the case for like the last fifteen years. That's got to be pounds, right? It's. I mean, that's got to be sixty. It's going to be like right? sixty-five pounds. Fifty-five pounds. What did you just do, though? I, I searched seventy United States yeah, dollars that's, in that's pounds. That's not how it works, though. Why not? Because they don't. They don't convert it like that. They 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 char- They don't charge a con- the perfect conversion rate because it changes all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because then you'd be selling a game for fifty-five point six three pounds. <laughs> They don't do that. They they either sell it for the exact same price, which is the most annoying thing ever, or they it's be like sixty pounds. It, it'll be sixty five pounds, I reckon. Do you be sixty five? There's already games that cost fifty five pounds. I feel like it'll be sixty. Ah, uh, I mean, but me, it I might feel like be to add to add ten pounds. I mean, I know the conversion changes, but it's still going to roughly be. That's still going to roughly be ten pound more, unless the economy goes to absolute hell, which it almost certainly will. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, games are just going to get crazy. It's, it's, it's going to be. It's, it's a tough time to be a grandma. But trying his, to buy their grandkids games. But here's the. And they don't know what console they're buying them for oh, or how don't. much money they're spending. But there's two interesting things I want to throw your way. Throw them. So if games are going to get more expensive, and this is all an assumption, they might not, right? But if, let's say they are. You got you. If you've got a PlayStation Five, you're buying these games that are like, you know, they're they're more expensive to make because they're for the PlayStation Five. So we've got to, oh, you know, which you, mm. are, you know, we're expecting games to be get better, so they're gonna be more expensive. So all right, but then you have got the Xbox Series X. It's like I just want to buy this for my Xbox. Why why do games cost seventy dollars now? What happened? Yeah, how do you justify that? I mean, to be honest, for me, I, I don't think I can justify spending more than, like, £50 on a game. No, nor can I. I, I. I don't think I ever have maybe a Nintendo game I've spent more than £50. I've spent, I think the only game I've ever spent £55 on, I think, it probably there's probably two, was mm. Civ Six, Yeah. which I, abs- I cringed at. Um, but I just did it. And that's including expansions and stuff. No, that was when it came out. Oh man, was it £55 when it came out? Yeah. Man, that surprises me. But yeah, I mean, still, Um, (laughs) you spend a lot of time on Civ 6. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, it was a given, that's why I was okay with it. And the other one, I think, I'm pretty sure Breath of the Wild was £55 as well. Yeah, I'm thinking, what game am I thinking? I'm thinking Mario Odyssey, maybe. I might have spent more than £50 on when that came out. No, I didn't get it when it came out, though. Maybe I never have. 
I, Even The Last of Us 2 didn't cost me more than £50. I already find uh, the pricing on Switch games to be very disingenuous. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, uh, I mean, I'd only... Uh, I'd spend... I think I think I could say £55, the absolute upper limit, if it's a game I was really, really looking forward to and for some reason, like, had to buy it brand new. But, like, spending, like, £60 on a game... That's just so much money. If yeah, it, especially with like all, all like Steam sales and stuff. I I want to I want to I really do want to try more AAA games because I don't play a lot of mm. big AAA games. Um, mm. and not I mean a lot of them are shit. That's why, but some of them aren't. But if I'm like, oh, should I take a gamble? Should I just have a bit of fun? And and it's fifty five pounds. I'm not buying that. Like Death Stranding, for example, right? I really mm. want Death Stranding on PC, but it's fifty-five mm. pounds. Like, I I know like, I've seen the reviews that they're, they're mixed. I still want it, but not for fifty-five oh, pounds. If it was forty pounds, yeah. I actually probably would have bought it already. Like Death Stranding, I didn't spend more than fifty pounds on that. I have <laughs> exactly. I think I got that for like forty-five pounds. Like, That's because you got an Amazon release. Though. If you want, if you had downloaded so. that on the PlayStation Store, that would have been fifty-five pounds. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true, it's true. But it's just, yeah, which is weird because it's like make it cheaper, encourage people to to download digitally. It's really confusing. Uh, I digital just it's, seems it's really it's no brainer. There's so much less money involved. Mm. Like it's the, the profits go straight to the source. You know, especially if it's a PlayStation game on the PlayStation yeah. Store. Like, come on. <laughs> it is weird. I mean, I, I, I don't think this is going to happen for too much longer. I don't think games are going to keep going until they get to, like, £100. Maybe, like, I don't know, some huge things in the future which are more, like, projects than games. Because, I don't know, we can't we comprehend what sort of things are going to come out on future consoles. But I think your kind of standard AAA game... I think soon the price is going to start either levelling out or going back down. Maybe as it becomes easier to develop these sorts of games with AI and stuff, potentially. <laughs> no. I just don't think this is feasible in the long term. I, I think eventually people are going to stop buying these games. I, I, don't, I do think that when you've got... If you've got a AAA game that is just good, mm. or even if it's just great, mm. spending... You can't justify spending... Honestly, you can't justify spending £55 on an 8 out of 10 game, in my opinion. I would no, love I think... to play more 8 out of 10 games, but they mm. so often they come out £55. Like, no way. Mm. I will... Cyberpunk, honestly, they could release... There's, there's basically, you know, within reason no upper limit they could charge whatever they want and i'll buy that because that yeah. i want it right but that is a special case but like mm. far cry 6 for example right which yeah. is another game which we're going to talk about yeah, i mean obviously. i'm interested right i want to play a far cry game but yeah they're all they all they're all like eight out of tens and you know damn well that it's going to be 55 plants with like bloody microtransactions and all that crap thrown yeah. in and I'm like no yeah. i don't want to do that <laughs> that's the thing i just want to guarantee that i'm gonna get a lot of time out of this and have a really fun experience because like i know i know it's kind of a weird comparison to make but there's games like terraria i got that for like five pounds <laughs> years and years ago very long time ago but the developers have just constantly updated it and just chucked in so much content and i've had a lot of fun over the years on Terraria. I haven't played it in a long time, admittedly, but you know I've gotten hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of, of fun yeah. out of Terraria, and it's like I spent such little amount of money, and it's so it's such high quality. I can have so much fun for such a long period of time, and it doesn't it doesn't matter if it's not a AAA game. Like obviously, it, it does matter how much time and effort is put into these games you know how big the teams are and stuff because yeah. people need to get paid but at the same time me as the consumer i'm not worried about that i'm just thinking is this worth my money am i gonna have 
Yeah. Am I going to have enough enjoyment for this much time? Like, I think <laughs> I'm sorry. The, <laughs> I don't care. The, the 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 time value thing is difficult because I don't mind a mind blowingly good fifteen hour game mm. that costs the same as you know The Witcher Three, and it's you know The Witcher Three is obviously like ridiculously long. I don't mind yeah. the. I think the pro- the problem is, is <laughs> unfortunately you have well, there's a few things, but you have The Witcher Three, which is I don't know. That is such a quintessential experience of a game. Like you get you get everything. You get the length, you get depth, and you get mm. also the quality that you'd expect from a AAA game. Yeah. Whereas there's a lot of triple a games which are they're they're short Mm. they're as good as the witcher but they're short like there's no i don't know Mm. i I wish i wish some companies would say you know what this this is 45 pounds like we're we're not we're not charging 55 this is 45 you know we we appreciate this is not um you know cyberpunk this is something that's kind of a shorter experience, but it's still really good, but not... I wish they'd do that more. Uh, yeah. And no, yeah, in fairness, it's not all about how much time you have no. enjoying the game. I, I, guess, I guess I mean it, kind of either how much time you bend on it or how much fun you have playing it, or I guess both. I guess it's also how much, like, the game affects you afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Like, and replayability is a big one for me because I just love completing games 100% collecting everything doing everything sort of thing but like when I think like The Last of Us I've spent a lot less time on The Last of Us than I have on Terraria just because yeah you know it's it's a linear game it does have a really good multiplayer and it's pretty replayable in some aspects but I would still consider The Last of Us a more valuable game than Terraria personally yeah you of course and that's a great value proposition because you've got you know everything about it is top top tier um and yeah okay it's it's linear and it's it's not that short but you know it's relatively short in no, terms I mean, of, compared to it like just just compared to the witcher free yeah or, i mean i mean uh, yeah. yeah it's a short it's not short it's like it's not short it's like two seasons of a tv show is worth of length probably isn't it like it's, yeah i mean for <laughs> Naughty Dog are like that. For third person narrative linear story games, they're always way longer than you expect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so, Uncharted 4 took me ages. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, Doom Eternal is mm-hmm. a surprisingly long, really sick linear action game. It's great. I love it. Uh, yeah. Devil May Cry 5, that was. that was. I'm, I'm glad I bought that game. Um, I don't think in that particular case maybe they could have done like oh this is a forty pound game still yeah I was still good I just wish they were more flexible it just it just feel like they they charge the maximum they the maximum without I mean they think about it but there's not yeah. much leeway like they're not gonna no, say I mean. it's fifty five pounds isn't it like if it's a big game yeah. there's no question it doesn't matter. No, that, that, that is what it is. It's like, oh, we, we can charge £55 for this and there's not going to be any outrage. So we're obviously going to do that. We're going to sell it for as much money as we possibly can. Like, that's always it. But it, it, it frustrates me because um, in, 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 the, in terms of the Switch, mm. I definitely consider that to be uh, a successor to 3DS, right? And yeah. Cause it, it really is. Um, yeah. And they, they, I'd expect them to charge more money but mm. they went from charging thirty pounds for a 3DS game to fifty five mm. for Breath of the Wild. Like mm. that is a jump. But because they're calling it a console, yeah, there was no outrage. Ex- well, I mean, even <laughs> even for a console, it's so expensive. Mm. Mm. Think about Wii U games in comparison. Wii U games went fifty five pounds. Oh, Wii- maybe they were. I never had a Wii. U. Wii U games were like fifty quid. Yeah. Well, oh man, were they really? 40, they were like 40, 40 to 50 quid. Fair dues. I, I, I don't know, maybe it's just my weird mental thing of 50 being the cap. But yeah, 
I just it's because it's been that way for years I don't years. think it's sustainable yeah I mean I remember when I was a kid it was it was 30 pounds it was like three months of pocket money I can buy a new video game let's get hype now it'd be five months <laughs> yeah it's really sad yeah <laughs> I'll have to do some extra car washing and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so that's um, that's game pricing. I think that was, a, that was a good topic to talk about. Yeah. Um, We're really tooting our own horn here. So what are we going to go on to next, Jamie? Because there, there is a lot to cover. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I've got a list in front of me. Do you want me to car- go through this? Yeah, carry on with yours. I, I've only got a couple things, but you, you might cover them anyway. Um, so... In the vein, there was a Ubisoft event. Um, yeah. Well, quickly, so I mentioned Far Cry 6. Uh, of course. There was also gameplay of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yeah. So and that. Watch Dogs 3. I saw that. Um, Do you mean Watch Dogs Legion? Legion. Uh, so, what do you think of Watch Dogs? I think Watch Dogs was the thing I found the most interesting. Mm-hmm. It looks like they're going in a Saints Row direction. It's so oh. silly. I was really surprised. Yeah, it's it's very silly, actually, yeah. Yeah, like there's like a beekeeper throwing bees at people, <laughs> old ladies doing martial arts and stuff. I was like, wow, I wasn't expecting this. Mm. Um, I feel like graphically I wasn't too impressed. That kind of threw up my immersion occasionally, but... Yeah, I agree. It, in the vein it looks, of Saints Row. It like Rome. a cool concept. Again, again, it looks... It's the sort of thing I'd be willing to spend oh, yeah. money on if it was cheaper. But I'm not going to pay, like, 50 quid for that. I'd pay, like, 35 for Watch Dogs Legion if it gets good reviews. I, maybe 40. I, if it was I know that's pounds, stingy I, and never do it that cheap. No, I agree. I'm not... There's no way I'm buying that on launch. But 40 yeah. quid, I mm. actually would. But it, it, what's going to happen is I'm going to wait until there's a sale... And I'll buy it for less than 40 quid. So. Well, I'm going to wait until there's a sale and then I've lost interest because something else mm. is going to have come out by then. That's what always happens with these types of games for me. Yeah, same. Same reason I haven't played an Assassin's Creed game in years. Yeah, the, the hype dies down and then you get less interested in it, for sure. Yeah, But it, 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 it was better than I was expecting. It looked pretty cool. What I, about you? What do you think of it? I think it looks like open world Hitman. Yeah, that, that's a good that's a good shout. It looks very stealthy, obviously. I feel like they might have gone too silly. Um, Maybe. Because I think with Hitman, obviously mm. a huge... And they know this, but they do it nicely. A huge part of, that, of the appeal of that game is trying to ass- do the most ridiculous assassinations you can. Like, really yeah. silly. And they let you do it. Mm. But it's a, it's a serious game that lets yeah. you do silly things. And they they know that you're doing silly things. But mm. it's funny in the context of the game because yeah. the game's serious. Whereas in Watch yeah, Dogs it makes Legion... funny because of that. Yeah. Watch Dogs Legion is kind of saying, hey, you liked mm. Hitman. Look how silly we can be. You know, yeah. oh, you, you, you know, in Hitman you might you know make someone drunk and then they fall over and you shoot them mm. uh, in this we're, we're gonna make it so that you fill them up with beer and <laughs> hang them upside down and, and they do a dance like <laughs> yeah I it's think, almost like trying too hard i think it is a little bit yeah no i can see that i i i don't know i was i i feel like i would prefer that to them taking it really seriously Oh but, yeah, definitely. Yeah, like you say, it might have gone too far with it. Um, I don't know. We'll see. It it was it was better than I was expecting. I liked. I'm still probably not going to buy it though. I like the idea of playing through that game and handicapping yourself the whole the whole time. So like, mm. um, I w- there's no way I'd play that game and be like the the assassin character or the yeah i would want to be the the drunk guy the whole yeah, time yeah. like for sure i want to be the granny i i don't i want to Three infiltrate this yeah, yeah yeah i want to infiltrate this place yeah in the most obscure way that i can uh, w- yeah which i admit that does excite me 
I, I kind of like the idea of that and definitely gives me strong Hitman vibes. Uh, mm. And it kind of it's kind of cooler because you can role play it more. Like you're not playing as Agent Forty. Is it Forty Seven? Forty Seven. Yeah. You're not playing as Agent Forty Seven. You're you can actually properly role play as yeah all these different people. whoever you want. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I hope they do that mechanic well. Yeah, that that's that's definitely the biggest pull for me. I like it that it's in London recruiting different people and stuff. Yeah, could be very good. Um, Far Cry Six is whatever. Are you not interested? There's no gameplay, so it's kind of like... Oh, okay, I see. I mean, the trailer was really good, though. Yeah? It it looks... In... I mean, I know that's it's not gameplay footage, but the animation is so good. And Giancarlo Esposito, if that's how you say his name, is in everything. I know, I, I love it. I love it. everything. He's in community. Give, give me more, give me more. <laughs> He's in everything. But yeah, I, f- I thought that I thought that, you know that whole dialogue was great with him and the son. Oh, it's fantastic! Um, and it could be a cool setting for a Far Cry game. I love the, I love how the running theme throughout Far Cry games is just like, you're stuck somewhere, get out. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, and also dictators. Yeah, like there's yeah. always there's always a dictator, even if not a formal uh, dictator. It's in some sense. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, obviously they've always got great villains. Although many would argue they've never topped Far Cry Three, which I think I would agree with. I I, I think they've tried to emulate Far Cry Three, and haven't succeeded yet. Like every I single think time. So. I think this is going to be their best shot because, you know, you got an incredible actor in. <laughs> no, I'm I'm, um, I'm nervous. Like, Far Cry Five is really well. I mean, I haven't actually played it, but apparently it was actually yeah. good. That was like a return to yeah. form. Uh, yeah. But I don't know no, no gameplay, so I don't know how to feel about we'll it. We'll really. see, we'll see. Um, I will quickly say that theories that the sun is Vera. I'm going to say it right now. Don't think that's going to happen in a million years. That'd be interesting. Because he's got like the same eyebrow scar or something. Hey, they could definitely do that. <laughs> it, could, could, it very much could be. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just, I just don't see it personally. Maybe we should place a, a beat a buck spell oh, on that later down the line. They, they, they definitely want to. Get people thinking about Far Cry Three if they can. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it would make sense that they would try and do that, but I don't know. I'm not 100 percent convinced. We'll see. We'll see. Um, what do you think about Assassin's Creed? Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I mean, <laughs> I don't remember the gameplay for it. What a I, snooze fest! A snooze fest? Yeah. <laughs> uh, could that be why I don't remember the gameplay for it? It's just Assassin's Creed again, like <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I I kind of get that with <laughs> with all Assassin's Creed games. <laughs> Maybe people will be mad at me for that, but I feel like they're all pretty similar in many ways. I I a lot of people adored Black Flag. And yeah, yeah. I, was I just played for that game, and the whole time I was just thinking, I wish this was actually a pirate game and not Assassin's Creed, because yeah. it's like the cool bits were when you were being a pirate, and the bits which were really samey and done, and it was when you're an, when you're being an, when assassin, you're an assassin, which surprisingly is most of the time. Yeah, <laughs> that kind of sucks. Yeah, I mean. Um... Yeah, I, I do remember watching this now. Um, yeah, it just looks like Assassin's Creed. I will say, though... There's not a whole lot to say, is there? God, Assassin's Creed has been the most um, unrelenting series this generation. Oh, I'm, it's so consistent. Like, wow. Wow. Yeah, like, yeah, you, can, you, can get, you can say they're stale, but as individual games taken on their own merit, they all, they're all like pretty, pretty damn good, actually. Yeah, no, it is impressive for sure. It's not like... I mean, there's obviously more consistent series like Call of Duty or FIFA or yeah. anything like that, NBA. But, you know, the Assassin's Creed games are, are so different from each other in 
some ways. And they, Maybe not in terms of gameplay. They're but... big. Assassin's Creed um, Odyssey. Yeah, and, and they're huge was games. Huge. Yeah. yeah. It is impressive. Um, yeah, I just I lost interest a while ago. Really. Oh yeah. I I don't know. I I, I just the Viking aesthetic does appeal to me, and I haven't had enough Viking games, so they they've got a chance of pulling me in. But See, I, I don't think they're going to. I always said like, give me a when when they were going through the kind of phase of, oh, they they had a slew of games which were kind of all taking place in the same sort of time period because we mm. had. We had like uh, the Assassin's Creed Three, so it was yeah. Civil War, so like guns and bang bang, and then we mm. had Black Flag, which was guns and bang bang, and it, it was, mm. took place like just before Three as well, and then yeah. we had uh, Unity, which was in France, and it was only a few years after Black Flag, so it was just yeah. like the same sort of guns, bang bang, and mm. then the one after that, which was in London was also, like, the same time period. Yeah. And it was all very samey for years. Yeah. And I always said, oh, I will play Assassin's Creed when they don't go to Egypt. And they did, and I didn't play it. <laughs> well, then you're a dirty liar and you owe their money. <laughs> I'm looking forward to Assassin's Creed Primal when you assassinate Sabretooth Tigers. <laughs> you know, you know, I would put a, a handsome amount of beta bucks on on a Assassin's a Creed Primal. A prehistoric Assassin's Creed. Well, you know what they'll do? Because they, obviously there's that whole alien backstory which they kind of forgot about. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's, I don't see why you couldn't have it set from when they actually are there. Mm. I don't know. I think we'll be going to the future next. I think they should do that. Assassin's Creed 2077. That'd be pretty hype. Imagine climbing, like, huge buildings. Yeah, I, f- I think that'd be really hype. I, I, yeah. I always... Um, I still kind of do dream about having a... This is a bit off topic, I guess, but uh, a, a Go for it. semi-futuristic Zelda. Um, yeah. I, f- I think Breath of the Wild actually did do quite I was going to say, it had aspects of that. It was kind yeah. of like post-apocalypse of a advanced technology sort of thing. Because I, I, I like, I kind of want to have a Zelda which is like, I don't know, it'd be really, it'd be really interesting to see if they could do that. When is Zelda going to get his goddamn guns? <laughs> no, because it'd be so cool though, if you, he still, he still had bows. Mm. I, that'd be sick like you're going against people no, with like guns they're like neon bows exactly they have yeah. neon bows like the ancient bow is yeah. literally that yeah. um, oh man Ubisoft should hire us and then Nintendo should hire us to make future Zelda and we'll tell them that we're already hired by Ubisoft so they pay us more to get us into their dirty hands sorry Ubisoft are paying us a handsome amount for Far Cry 2077 Far Cry and Assassin's Creed 2077 I'm expecting there to be after Cyberpunk, assuming it's successful. I'm, I'm expecting there to be a wave of games that try and uh, replicate that futuristic thing. I'm just hoping we get dinosaur games. There's a new dinosaur horror game coming <laughs> out. What's it called? Did you send me that? Yeah, I did. That's good because I don't remember what it was called. What's it called? <laughs> no idea. Oh man. That looks pretty good. I mean, it just looks like Alien Isolation, but with dinosaurs. I I only sent it to you because it was just like dinos, dinosaurs. <laughs> because we're six years old. <laughs> yeah, but I do like dinosaurs still. I like dinosaurs. I like dinosaurs. I will always have a favorite dinosaur, and I do not even care. But what is your favorite dinosaur then? It's a Parasaurolophus. <laughs> Of course, it's some freaking. Parasaurolophus aren't that obscure. Sounds they're pretty obscure to me. They're the ones with the crest heads. They've got like a penis on the back of their head. I know the one. That's a I just think they'd be cool to like, you know, you could ride one, you could have it pulling a cart along, just have it walking around and grazing on the land. They're a cool dinosaur. 
I don't think I have a. I honestly, I don't. I'd say I don't think I have a favorite dinosaur necessarily, but annoyingly, and I know it's it's so lame, but I do. Feel, I love T Rex. I think T Rexes are really cool. <laughs> Like they're just like they have that's really funny. They're useless little hands, and then yeah. the rest of their body is just this like choo choo motherfucker just runs at you with his giant head of teeth. I just love the ballad of Big Al. It's this whole story about this huge killer T Rex who was the epitome of an apex predator, and then he died because he fell over and he was too tall. That is really really funny. <laughs> <laughs> So that was the dinosaur segment of Openly Beta. What's next in news, Jamie? Um, Super Hot Mind Control Delete was announced. I have not heard a single thing about that. Is it a sequel to Super Hot? It's a bit weird, actually. So it's like a sequel and an expansion at the same time. Ooh. Um, they're kind of... You can't get Super Hot... They're automatically upgrading Super Hot to Super Hot Mind Control Delete, and it's kind oh. of like it is actually a sequel, but it replaces the first one as well. <laughs> That's really weird. But the the really imagine if other games did that, like you can no longer get the Last of Us, you just have to get the Last of Us Two. Yeah, I mean that would be unbelievably bad <laughs> as soon as I started that sentence I realised how hilarious that situation <laughs> <you> imagine <laughs> that's the digital future we're looking Ooh. at though. <laughs> no it's, it's a bit weird it's a bit weird um, it is weird because like what if I want to play the first one yeah is it just going to have all the first ones levels in it as well uh, I, it must be it, it must be yeah which is why it's kind of like an expansion yeah. But I think they've added more levels than there were in the original game entirely. Uh, so it'd be more like buying Last of Us 2 and just getting the first one with it automatically. I think so. The weird thing about be a lot better. The weird thing about Super Hot is that I always thought that was completely untapped potential there. Um Yeah, for sure. It it's a really good game mm. and it's far too short and there's no reason why like they they could easily make it longer. Yeah, definitely. it's like they were holding themselves back for no reason. I don't really get it. Mm. I mean, for me, it's it's the epitome of VR. Like, it's perfect <sighs> for VR. It's so good. So, Mind Control Elite is not the VR version. And I think it will come to VR though. Well, here's the thing, right? The developers yeah. were asked about it, and they just said like. Oh, we we know the VR version is very well loved and blah, blah, blah. It's like, hang on a minute. Your your little VR game that you think you've made, your little silly VR game, happens to be like one of the best examples of VR so For far. Sure. And there's this kind of being very um blase. I don't know what it is. Like they genuinely the statement I can't remember the words, the statement they made about it. Seems like mm. they genuinely did not realise that this is a fantastic VR game. Yeah, like it, it felt like it was a side project for them, mm. which it probably is. But I don't know why. <laughs> it's a very good one. I think if you have su- Super Hot VR, they just automatically upgrade it to Super Hot Two and just strip VR functionality <laughs> from you. Oh God! Well, actually, yeah, yeah. Looking at it now. <laughs> I don't know. Oh man, they've got to put it to VR eventually. Yeah. Like, Super Hot's fun, but playing it in VR is just another level. I don't even own VR. I have to come to your house. Yeah. Oh, you need to play some uh, some Half Life Alex eventually. Mm. Yeah, I do. I, have, I haven't even watched any, to be fair. I've been saving myself. That's that's a very interesting little uh, little announcement there. Yeah. Very peculiar. Have you got any more news for us here, Jamie? Well, not really. Do you want me to go real quick? Oh, yeah. I've got more to say. Oh, yeah. Um, I've only got one thing. I think everything else has been covered by you already. The Uncharted movie. Ooh. Heard about this? No, please tell. 
so it's been in development hell for a solid uh, 38 years, I believe. Oh. Um, and it started filming, I believe, today oh. after seven directors. Oh. So we have that. Oh. Um, it's now the director of Zombieland. Um, I say the director of Zombieland optimistically. I believe he's done some other films that have been a bit so-so. But I don't think he's ever done a bad film. So, you know. Director, maybe a good choice. Do you want to know who's playing Nathan Drake? Oh, goodness me, who? I'll tell you that it's a young Nathan Drake. It's Tom Holland. Oh, which okay. I personally I like Tom Holland a lot. I think he's a very likable person. I think him being Nathan Drake is the worst decision I've ever heard Hollywood make. Um, as a a, a young Nathan Drake, uh, sh- I can see that. You can see that. Yeah, I think so. Oh, but we've seen young Nathan Drake in the games. Oh, I haven't played the games. Yeah, you don't. You don't get. A massive Tom Holland vibe Ooh, from Young Nathan Drake. Okay, okay. He kind of goes from uh, he kind of goes from like, like he's he's a bit of a, of a bad kid, but he's a bit grumpy and a bit like quiet, blah blah blah. And then he, but he, he's still quite he's still quite quippy, especially with his brother. And then he just becomes Nathan Drake, who's you know just bad guy punching quippy superhero yeah. man Nathan Drake. <laughs> I just, I don't know, I don't see room for Tom Holland in that, you don't, maybe. You know who'd be, I mean, again, I haven't played Uncharted, but you know who'd be good as uh, Nathan Drake? Go on. Harrison Ford, but not old. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, am I Young right Harrison in saying Ford. that? <laughs> it sounds perfect to me. You know what, I don't even know if I can see that. Really? Is it? Because again, like... I feel like Harrison Ford's too serious. You need, like, a, a Chris Pratt, but... A more rugged Chris Pratt. I don't think Chris Pratt's rugged enough. Yeah, but like Indiana Jones is basically Uncharted. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he is, but Uncharted's more like I don't know. He's he's just he's really funny. That's his whole thing. Okay. Um, I mean, there, there was a, a web video a few years back, like a short Uncharted film, where they had Nathan Fillion playing Nathan Drake. And, like, it's just perfect. That would be perfect now for an older Nathan Drake. And that's what people are saying. People are saying, oh, they should have done an older Nathan Drake and got Nathan Fillion. But I keep thinking, if they were going to do an older Nathan Drake, they should just get Nolan North. Oh, my God, can you imagine? <laughs> like, Nolan North is just Nathan Drake. He looks like him. He is him. How old is he? He's 49. He's still in pretty good shape. He could, he could do an older Nathan Drake for sure. What about... But fair... That's not the direction they're going in. What but, about Ryan Gosling? Uh, I was thinking Ryan Reynolds, but Ryan Gosling could also be a good shout. Oh, Ryan Reynolds I'm not sure about. I think it'd be too much. Yeah, I, I, I don't think Ryan Reynolds could. I think Ryan Gosling is probably a better shout, especially thinking about um, what we were talking about a couple of weeks ago, uh, The Nice Guys. Yes. He's very... Yeah, definitely. Like, a really drunk, depressed Nathan Drake in that. <laughs> he just needs to bulk up a bit and get a wider face. <laughs> No, but yeah. Just get a yeah, wider I, face, bro. <laughs> just get a wider face for the part. I think Ryan Gosling is an infinitely better shout than uh, Tom Holland. Yeah, definitely. But that's not even the worst casting in the film. Uh, are you aware of the character Victor Sullivan? No, not at all. He's the uh, old-timey adventurer who's friends with, with Nathan Drake. He's kind of like the adventurer from the 50s sort of thing. Okay. Like the uh, Magnum P.I. Burt Reynolds... Tom Selleck sort of character, always smoking a cigar and wearing Hawaiian shirts. Like, like, oh, I, think I, know, like I think I know the character actually. There you go. Do you want to know who's playing him? Go on. Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> oh. Mark Wahlberg is playing Victor Sullivan, and I want to poke my eyes out again. Oh. I like Mark Wahlberg in in the right role. He's absolutely hilarious in the other guys, and other things oh god him for Victor Sullivan is a terrible choice and you know it's the producer because it's a producer who's been involved in a million bad decisions it's the guy who sewed up Deadpool's mouth in Wolverine film because he hated <sighs> Deadpool it's the guy who helped make the Max Payne movie he's he's done a whole lot of terrible decisions and I feel like he's almost certainly to blame and he, keep, he's, he keeps putting Mark Wahlberg in movies that Mark Wahlberg shouldn't be in. So he, he's clearly 
he's clearly friends with Mark Wahlberg in some capacity. God, it's painful, isn't it? But it's like, oh, Uncharted. Like, it doesn't even need a movie because the games are so good. But, like, at the same time, it would be so easy to make a great Uncharted game. But the cast is so important. I can't help but feel that there is nothing an Uncharted movie could possibly do better than the games game. haven't. Like, no, I just don't, have I just don't like... see how a it's a cinematic game. I just hmm. don't understand. I, I cannot see a movie topping it unless it's crazy. unless it was genuinely like we're talking like ten out of ten game here versus oh, yeah. what appears to be a six out of ten movie at the moment. <laughs> yeah, like, it's crazy. <sighs> And the thing is, it, I mean, to me, this always strikes me as a kind of, um, I mean, it, it's not this. It's just it's just a cash grab more than anything else. It's just like this is a marketable thing we can get money off of. But to me, it always feels like looking down a, a, on the game sort of thing. Like, oh, people don't want this games. So let's turn them into movies. And they kind of think they can, like, make them better. So they change things. I know. But I it's going to be really embarrassing when... The performances in the Uncharted movie are worse than in the Uncharted games. Because <laughs> the performances in Uncharted are so good. I mean, I mean uh, mocap actors in games are extremely underrated. Oh, they're, they're, um, they're normally becoming... unheard of. Yeah. You know, or, like you said, they, you're going to say, I'm sure they're going to be more and more relevant the better games get in terms of that technology yeah. for sure mm. I mean it's a very it's, a, it's an extremely young uh, in terms of mocap it's it's like ridiculously young as an industry uh, yeah so yeah I mean especially people like Nola North and Troy Baker like they're just you know uh, who? well <laughs> who are they? <laughs> but yeah, it's like I mean, I you know I I can see Tom Holland as as Nathan Drake in some capacity. Um, I shouldn't I shouldn't typecast him in my head. I, he he could potentially do a good job. Um, oh man, I just <laughs> I just that second thought Robert Pattinson he'd be a great young Nathan Drake. <laughs> That's just me being obsessive with Robert Pattinson yeah, I, again. I I wouldn't know. Yeah, I'm just I don't I don't think that would even work. I'm just trying to put him in everything <laughs> blindly for no reason. And that but, is what the director <laughs> of the Uncharted movie is doing right now. <laughs> Tom Holland, he's big. Yeah, but I just can't see... I can't see Mark Wahlberg as, as Sullivan. I'm sorry. Like, I haven't seen Tom Holland in enough films to fully judge his range, but I no. feel like I feel like I've got a judge of Mark Wahlberg's range. Yeah, and Sully's such a great character. We'll see. We'll see what they do. I'm just gonna have low expectations, as low as they can possibly be. Uh, well, I, I don't. I, 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 I just, from, the, from what you just said, it sounds like it's almost guaranteed to be a crap movie. We just, we're never gonna have a video game movie that is as good as Sonic the Hedgehog, <laughs> which I still haven't seen. That that movie is such. It's so average. <laughs> it's so good. Like, as in, it's just good. <laughs> it's why it's so weird. Like, what mm. a weird movie. Like, it's so mid 2000s. It is. Again, I haven't seen it, but no, in appearance, no, no. it what, looks. No, seriously, it is yeah. straight out of the mid 2000s. It is like. It's hot. One it's Alvin and the Chipmunks. It's Garfield. I. <laughs> I was watching it and I wasn't sure if it was you know oh this is straight out of the 2000s mm. or if it was more I just haven't seen kids movies for a while but I was thinking yeah. about it like in fairness I kind of have seen all the major kids movies like over the years Recently. I haven't exactly yeah. stopped watching yeah I mean what are kids movies like Pixar, DreamWorks, yeah. Spider Man, so, Into the Spider Verse. This was like, like this was like such <laughs> such a blast from the past in all the wrong ways. Like yeah, it was like yeah, just it just felt like a crap Dream DreamWorks, one of the crap DreamWorks movies, basically. Well, DreamWorks don't make crap movies, but yeah, mm. I know what you mean. 
I mean, the Uncharted movie is going to feel straight out of the early 2000s because it's been pushed back for so many years. <laughs> oh, another fun fact. Mark Wahlberg was originally going to play Nathan Drake and then he aged out of the role during development hell. So they were like, oh, I guess we'll make him Sullivan. Right, I don't want to hear any more of this. This is just painful. Yeah. That was news. So... Quick shout out to the guy who voiced Kratos in God of War. I feel like we talked about good video game performances and I didn't mention him. And he who's was Troy incredible. Baker? Troy Baker, yeah. He voices everyone. <laughs> so Jamie, what was your so going to lead into? I've been watching Dark. Did you say you have or have I? Oh, I have. Yeah. That's what I've been watching mainly. It's still been incredible. It is such a show. Very complicated. Yeah. And did you say you were watching it? No, no, I still haven't started it. I really okay. need to. I'm not going to go into any details. I kind of want to, um, I want you to watch it. Then I kind of, I'm feeling what we should have a dedicated episode. Uh, special just talking about it because it's really good. Yeah, that'd be good. Have you been watching anything? I have been watching nothing. I finished Community, and now I've made my parents watch Community, so now I'm re-watching Community oh, about a week after I've watched it. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is random, but I'm going to mention a quick thing, because it's related to viewing. Have you heard of Curiosity Stream? Oh. It's a thing that is sponsored... It sponsors many YouTubers, especially Vsauce. It's I feel like a streaming. I feel like that's where I've heard of it. <laughs> yeah, probably Vsauce. I mean, they sponsor quite a few. Um, it's just a streaming service full of documentaries, basically. Okay. And they post a whole load of documentaries. So I was watching a YouTuber that I watched the other day, and he hit me with a fun deal: a year's worth of Curiosity Stream for twelve pounds. And included in that, I get a subscription to something called Nebula for as long as I get a subscription to Curiosity Stream. Right. So I'd never heard of Nebula, so I looked into that. It's basically uh, a bunch of very talented YouTubers have taken to Nebula, and they just upload very high quality content to Nebula, and it's it's a subscription service. So it's basically YouTube, but you pay three pound a month for guaranteed higher quality content. Interesting. And a lot of YouTubers have tried to do their own streaming service in the past, and I feel like a lot of times it fails horrifically because they just charge too much. Yeah. But when this is like three pound a month, and obviously it's like cheaper if you get a longer, like you know, thirty pound a year sort of deal, I thought that's really reasonable. A lot of them wouldn't do that. And I looked at it, and it's got really good content on, and I thought I can get this for twelve months for free when I spend twelve pound with Curiosity Stream. We're not sponsored, by the way. Just thought I'd point that out. <laughs> yeah. But I very that much was sounded like I was such a sponsored segment. But um, yeah, I I actually did it. I got roped into spending money on something else, and I've watched a few things on there, and it's really good content. It's really good. Hmm. So if you come across that deal, I'd actually recommend it. Twelve pound for a whole year, Curiosity Stream, and Nebula. It's good stuff. That's a that's a very that's actually quite a cool recommendation. I've just looked those those two things up and uh, yeah, never heard of them. But there we go. I mean, if you like documentaries, Curiosity Stream is just full of everything, <laughs> and um, you know, Nebula's got a gaming section which is pretty fun. There's not a, a whole lot on Nebula at the moment, but I think more will go on. I mean, there's still there's still like a year's worth of content on here. <laughs> like, I... There's a lot. <laughs> I can't actually justify it though, uh, because yeah. I am, I am so just I'm drowning in, <laughs> in content at the moment. Like, yeah, I mean, I, for me, I'm I'm putting off dark for this. <laughs> there's like no end to the amount of content that is right yeah. at my fingertips at all times. So I'm no, not, I don't feel like I need to get into anything else right no, now. No, that is true, and it, I did have, I did very much have that, but I just thought. A pound a month what if this offer passes me up sake. and I've already watched a few things where I'm like I feel like I've got my money's worth like £12 that's like a Marvel film I mean yeah true but yeah it's it's full of good stuff 
I just if if you like a documentary, um, and you come across this deal from one of your favourite YouTubers, I think it's worth it's worth maybe giving them the support and uh, and checking it out if it interests you. Obviously, it's completely up to you. But I I thought I would just throw that in there since I've been watching absolutely nothing new. Video games. So, yeah. Oh. Um, you played. Well, <laughs> I, I actually like a couple of nights ago. I was playing some Hunt. Um, yeah. I, I I have to inform you. I've I've gotten more people into Hunt now. It's um, very sad for me, Jamie. I'm being I'm being squeezed out. <laughs> You're not being squeezed out at all. Um, I'm being squeezed out. You heard it here if anything, first, folks. If anything, it's it being squeezed we're, out. We're going to be playing it way more often because so. Uh, a shared a shared friend of mine uh, of ours, um, of ours yeah. with the surname of Hall um, yeah. has been roped in, and a certain Pinkman has been uh, roped in as well. And uh, a good boys to rope, which obviously I'm going to squeeze you out. When we played it I'm the other day, contact them and stop playing with them. But we were we were all saying like, it, it, if only there was four. When we get you yeah, on as well, maximum is upset. But clearly, we can mix and match the players. I think we're all comfortable playing playing with each other. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure, we're all, we're all good at playing with each other. Uh, no, I had a, I had a really wicked game. I tell you what, um, come and play um, some. We'll set up a three player game um, of Hunt. Yeah. Oh, I'm very down. Really... I, I love Hunt. I'd love to play more Hunt with three people. It's really good. It's really, is it really, really different. Yeah, it, it's yeah. Surpri- I was quite surprised. It, it really changed the vibe. Um, yeah, I bet it changes the game. Like we we were we were murdering. Like seriously, <laughs> we were doing really good. Like just, I felt yeah. so much. I was getting more kills because I felt so much more confident having two people. It, it mm. it's really weird how like just one more person just. With, with the two of us, it was like a really creepy mechanic. We, we had a game mm. where where um, one of us died, and so I was, it was just the two of us, and it, it went right back to being horrible again. Like, as soon yeah. as one person died, it was like, well, that's it. It's, it's, it is <laughs> really interesting. I mean, I bet it's, yeah, I, I bet it's way more advantageous to have just that one extra person. Yeah. Um, and then I'm, I'm, still, I'm still playing Xenoblade. I still haven't finished it. Um, oh yeah, maybe been playing that for a long, old time though. I with that, um, I, I had a, like I wasn't playing it a lot for a bit because it, it got annoying. Like uh, the midpoint of the game is kind of a bit. It's it's like some really crap moments that are. I mean, you could call them difficulty spikes. But they weren't really difficulty spikes because it's kind of you had to do very specific things, um, which didn't feel very fun at all, uh, and I was mm. getting very frustrated with it. Uh, but now I'm back in. I'm back into it. I mean, like the, you know, probably the the the, la- the latter third of the game now, um, which yeah. and it's picked up a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, That's good. It's a bit weird actually. Um, with Xenoblade Two, the 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 game very very quickly gets very heavy and political, and there's lots of cool backstabbing, and you make friends who you think you know who you think are like going to be the big bad. It's actually like oh, this is actually now a party member that you've got. Whereas this <laughs> yeah. game, for like the first like twenty five hours, I would say. Yeah, the story is a very, very simple revenge plot. Yeah, and it's very annoying because you got the characters are like really so hell bent on this revenge, mm. and you're like, really, like you're there's like obviously there's more than just this happen. There's like other things happening, but the main party seem to be ignoring all these very obvious hints that there's more going on. And they're yeah. just like, no. Ah. Oh. Is it the character they're going against is called uh, Metal Face? And I'm like, nah, screw you, Metal Face. And then Metal like Face. Taser face. It, it happens like multiple times where Metal Face will come down 
seriously overpower the, the party. You mm. have a boss fight. You don't kill him. But And then a cutscene plays where he could kill you and then something distracts him and he goes, Oh, I almost had you then, Manado boy. I'll be back for your fresh meat later. And he flies <laughs> off. And that happens like five times. And yeah. it's like... Are you seriously still doing this? Like, what is this story right now? You're just, you just, like, have a little, you know, like, Metal Face is this yeah. freaking huge robot <laughs> with giant, like an si- eldritch god. Yeah, he he's he has like he, um, scissor hands, like actual gigantic claws, like Edward, exactly like Edward, and yeah. he, you see him kill people instantly who aren't in your party but when it comes mm. to your party he like in true anime style he like does a big old monologue faffs about kind of you know plays with his food a bit just you know <laughs> just long enough so that the main character can like freaking I don't know and then and then Shulk keeps going on about how he wants to change the future right he has a uh, mm. he has visions of the future and mm. occasionally he'll have a vision and he'll be able to change what happens, right? Mm. But like, I'd say like 80% of the time he has a vision and then it just happens anyway. And like, he, he kind of almost goes like out of his so way. Like that's so raven. Like that's so raven. <laughs> Maybe it's canon in the Xenoblade universe. <laughs> Maybe it is. Corey in the house. I always forget that Shulk's in Xenoblade. There's loads of good bits as well. Yeah. But I can't help but just feel the occasional plot slot. That with Xenoblade 2, I was constantly engrossed in the story and they mm. they just kept I don't know, I I think it, it's it's a sign of the age of the game, because it's an old game now. Yeah. Um Xenoblade 2's characters were uh I don't know, they seem more intelligent. They just seem to they Fair. A big thing happened, and they were like, "Oh, we should probably like take that into account now." Yeah, I think that's just more immersive, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that. It is. What have you been playing? You said you got some games. Oh, I've been playing so many games. I mean, I'm not going to talk through all of them. Um, I've us... made a heck ton of videos <laughs> that are going to be sprinkled out over the next few months because I've just got so many to put out. So look out for those. Also, watch our hunt videos because we talked about hunt and we filmed a couple of hunt videos and they're amazing. More on the but way, yeah, by the way. Um, More on the way. I just, I, I, I'm, I, I'm still, I'm still subscribed to Humble Bundle. So, I've like, I haven't, I haven't done Humble Bundle in a few months. I've got a lot of games on there to play, so I've just downloaded a whole load of Humble Bundle games. Um, I found loads on my wish list that I could have, so I was like, yeah, Ooh. we'll get through some of those. And then I just I had I had I had some birthday money. My birthday was recently, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to spend a bunch of money in the Steam sale because so many games are so ridiculously cheap. So then I just bought a whole bunch more games <laughs> from my Steam wish list. Nice. I think I brought like twenty games for like forty pound or something stupid. Like, and some of these are really really good games. And they're all just, they're all just, they're great fun. I've been playing loads and loads of like simulation and management games or like city builder games. Hmm. I've got so many of them now. Two Point Hospital, Jurassic World Evolution, some little ones that are fun like Kingdoms and Castles, Parkosaurus Islanders. Parkosaurus is really fun. Planet Coaster. I see what you mean about it not being very managementy. It's much more sandboxy. It's really easy, basically, if you're playing it as a management game. Right. But it's still really fun. Uh, Jurassic World Evolution I was interested in because, as we know, I absolutely love dinosaurs. And <laughs> I used to love Jurassic World, uh, Jurassic Park Operation Genesis for the PS2, if you ever played that game. I haven't. Uh, ooh. It was, it was, I might have done, actually. It, it was a Jurassic Park builder for the PS2, and it was really good. I absolutely <clears> loved it. Um and Jurassic World Evolution, while I have had fun with it, it's it could be infinitely better. <laughs> like, if I think about a Jurassic Park Operation Genesis sequel, 
I imagine it being far superior to Jurassic World Evolution. It just right. feels very restrictive to me. Um, but I still enjoy the, the dinosaur fun. Parkosaurus is a dinosaur park building game, but it's like it's very indie and pixely and stuff, but it's really fun um, and very cute. And that's a lot of fun. That's a cool one. That feels like more in depth than Jurassic World Evolution. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's cool. Um, yeah, just a lot of games like that. A few other little platformers and stuff. I won't go too in depth because there's so many of them, but they've been good. But one I will say about is a game called Eliza, which I've only just started, but it's been pretty cool. So it's like okay. it's like a, a narrative sort of kind of like a text adventure but not like um how do you describe those sorts of games like you know there's two characters next to each other talking and then you pick dialogue options like a dating sim but you're not dating (laughs) you know what i mean (laughs) like a life sure okay just 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 a story now um yeah and it's like you're you're i guess it's set in the near future i don't know a lot about it i wasn't expecting this and it's like you're playing as this woman who's like a uh, guidance counselor for people or like a therapist um and basically there's it's set in the near future and there's this artificial intelligence and you're basically like a um i don't know what the word i'm looking for is like a, a conduit i guess for this ai so people come into you for for therapy sessions or counseling sessions and they talk to you and then the AI listens and tells you what to say, the player, and then you as the player talk to them. That's how it goes. Okay. So you're not really doing anything. You're just providing the human the human conversation because depressed people don't want to talk to an AI. <laughs> um, so it's, it's... And it's it's obviously got a lot of mental health themes. The main character's clearly depressed. There's some sort of tragedy in her past. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming, like, a, a boyfriend or someone died, maybe. Um, but yeah so far it's the dialogue's all very good and the characters are very interesting Um, it's been very very linear and restrictive I haven't had many choices I've had like two options for things to say to people at times but they're both very similar so I'm not sure how much um, how much my choices matter and how much they will matter as the game goes on Mm -hmm. but maybe I know it has at least two endings so I don't know (laughs) But there was a part of the game that was really fascinating to me. So it's your first session with someone. There's this guy who's really depressed and he's really going off. It's all fully voice acted as well, which is that's all okay. really good performances. Um, and you're, you're you're reading the script, blah blah blah, saying what the AI tells you to say. And then he starts getting really angry and agitated. And he's like, "I know you're not even listening to me. I know it's an AI. I know how it works." He's like, "Can you just talk to me as a human being?" Like he's really going off. He's really like hmm. losing it. And then. Um, the AI tells you to say, okay, it's me. And then it's like, it's me. It's not the AI anymore. It's just me talking to you as a person. My name's blah, 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 whatever her name is. And you're talking to him and he's like, he starts talking to you. It's like, oh, like, oh, I'm sorry. I just, I just really need to talk to a real person. And he's like, oh, is it really you? And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just me talking. And he's like, oh, thank you. But it's still the AI telling you what to say. But he Ooh. thinks at that point that you've gone off script and you're just talking to him as a real human. And it's like, Ooh. oh my god, it's so good. It felt like a really dark Black Mirror-y moment. Yeah. Because it's oh, like wow. the AI is just smart enough to, 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 to talk to him and you know, tell him what he wants to hear. And then like you come out of it and she's like, I don't know if I helped him. Like She just says, go see this person, ask for this medication, do these exercises on the app for your Eliza system or whatever on your phone um so you know it's all very it's all very kind of sterile and robotic yeah so it kind of plays with those themes well um I'm assuming there's going to be a point in the game where I am going to be able to go off script from the AI and that's going to have consequences Mm. but I don't know yet oh cool which is really fascinating to me and yeah I haven't played a whole lot but I hope it does I hope it does a lot with the concept, and I hope I do have more choices. Um, but either way, it's a very interesting story so far. That sounds sick. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, it was it was like a pound in a Steam sale. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I can't pass that up. It had great reviews as well. Jack, yeah, it's been good. I need to. I I pay for humble choice, 
and man, I need to stop forgetting about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, I, I, or sometimes like, I just do. Oh, it's annoying because I don't really want to get rid of it because it it throws you some games that you just don't you either forget about mm. or you haven't heard of and it looks sick and it is sick. Mm. Oh, like I'm I'm just on their current the, the July games. Mm. There's some good games which I've wanted for a while that I forgot for about. Sure. Oh, man. I, I mean, no, I looked at it and I was like, I've paid for games on here that I could have got for free. Yeah. I mean, last year I went like the entire 12 months, not missing a month. But I just, earlier this year, I just I just kind of started falling off of it. Yeah. But some months are just so good. You get it's such value for money. Like the month when it was uh, Insane Trilogy, Spyro Ignited and Call of Duty... I know. What was that all about? Like, it was, one month. That was that the was... year that you got it, wasn't it? That the month yeah, that you that got was, it. Yeah, that was when I got it. Yeah, because I, I told you about it. I was like, you can't, oh, no, no, you actually, can't ignore that. Um, I, I did already have it. I, I started oh. it over Christmas when I did the uh, Yogscast Jingle Jam. Okay. But yeah. I, oh, yeah, you just I, said I, it, I think I hadn't noticed it and then you told me it was on there. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the games I've been talking about today have been on here. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think... Two Point Hospital, Frostpunk's another one I played, Planet Coaster. Yeah, I've got these. I've, I've got. <laughs> I, look, I mean, fr- let's be honest. There isn't enough time in the world to, to play all these games. To anywhere near. No. I can't even. I haven't got enough time to touch any of these games, let alone no. actually put time into it. It's insane. No. I mean, I always, I just justify it in my head that even if I'm not, even if I'm not going to play all these games, or even if I'm just going to completely miss months, it's kind of just like donating money to charity on a monthly subscription. That is true. I know it's not all going that to charities, but it's like, I really don't mind supporting this either way. Yeah. I don't have to worry about donating to charity if I'm doing that every month. <laughs> I'll do the odd bit every now and then on, in addition. And oh. just look at this value. 283 pounds, 252 pounds, 233 pounds. If anything, this is making me this is now making me a little bit sad because like I actually just want I want now want to play all these games. And like I <laughs> this is <laughs> all these games I could you know, even if I put this I, I wouldn't even have to do this in the whole year. Like the games that mm. I've got right now give it like two or three months of these games that's like a year's worth of easily easily a year's worth of games uh, yeah I mean, like easily way more but yeah yeah I know what you mean for sure I mean you know what we got to do Jamie we just got to keep putting out incredible content so we can become full time video game players well we, we do make incredible content and we do every day we've passed we've, we've got 10,000 subscribers now so yeah, we're, we're monetized we're getting there um yeah. We just need. What we need is plastic surgery to make make ourselves look exactly like Wario and Waluigi, and then people will come and see the freak show. That will get more views. You know, it'll get even more views if we both look like Markiplier. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, (laughs) that's all there is to say to that. Oh man, I mean the dream is to is to have a big enough following that we can play video games and simultaneously raise a bunch of money for charity. Um, that would be heck of fun. We'll get there soon enough. And can I throw in? Oh yeah, go on. A steamy quick hot take at the end. Oh wow. That is absolutely unrelated to steamy. everything we've talked about. And did I interrupt you? Do you want to say something else first? I don't even want to talk to you anymore. But yeah, okay. go on. Um, you're gonna hate this. Oh. I watched some cyberpunk uh, footage of gameplay. I was unimpressed. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I was unsure what direction your answer was going to go in that brief silence. Um, it, I mean, I know, I know, it's not, it's not, it's not out yet, and they've pushed it back, which I'm a fan of because I haven't pre-ordered it, and I would much rather they just keep pushing it back and flesh it out. It just looked really janky. Um. Ah, uh, I don't mind. I don't mind jankiness too much because mm. um, it's a big old RPG. Uh, yeah, I know. If anything, think... if anything, jankiness means that it's probably going to be more of a focus on it being an RPG. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> the janky of the game. I don't know, it just looked... Just all the animations and stuff, and the facial animations and stuff, I was like, eh. And the, 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 the hand-to-hand combat with, with some other guys, I was like, looks a bit jank. I thought the, and the driving doesn't look too great, I think the but I'm not too fussed good. about the driving because it's not, it's not a racing game. I don't mind my open-world games having relatively floaty driving physics. I think the issue that a lot of people are having with Cyberpunk is mm. that it's not, it's not perfect because that is impossible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and people. people it's, it's like we've said before, we're expecting everything from this. But there's no. It's it's unfair because this game has been hyped up way more than it should have been. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's I, I'm, it's gonna be it's gonna it's gonna be a good, a good game. It's gonna be worth playing. But like, yeah. ultimately, you're gonna finish the game. The credits are gonna yeah. roll, and you're gonna be like, oh. It has an ending because a lot of people are kind of thinking, "Well, I might as well just live in cyberpunk world now." It's not like that. It's not. <laughs> it's not supposed to be that. It's a. It's, it's a not story. GTA. It's got a story. Yeah. Like a lot of people, think... a lot of people who I've talked to in real life are saying, like, are getting big, big misconceptions and saying stuff like, "Oh, you can, you can start wherever, wherever you want. Like in this massive mm. world, you can be who you want to be. You can do what you want to do." It's like. No, that's it's People actually are expecting it to be the oasis. It's like it's like one hundred percent story driven. Like yeah. this is a story driven game. Yeah, you can just it's just got strong RPG mechanics in it. Yeah, I think there's nothing me, wrong I'm just, with that. I'm constantly <laughs> comparing it to The Witcher Three in terms of jank, at least. I just think, oh, it looks so much jankier than The Witcher Three. But I know they've got they've got months to. Uh, to, you know, polish it all I don't up, agree, actually. Make I, it nice and shiny. I don't think it looks janky. I think it looks pretty janky. Jank was the main takeaway I got from what I saw. Man. Yeah. And, I mean, that's more so for me because it's story-driven, you know? Do you know where you watched it from, this um, gameplay? I, I will send you the link afterwards. I would, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm not like... I'm not like, oh, The, wi- the Witcher free. I'm not like, oh, Cyberpunk's going to be terrible. Because, you know, I, I trust Alana Pierce. And she's played it. I haven't played it. <laughs> um, I like. I, I like how I brought her up, and now that's like I go to source. <laughs> Literally, she's really good. She's really good though. Before, yeah. And then you, you you broke the ice of Lana Pierce. I mean, I I always watch her on Funhouse and stuff anyway. But yeah. Um, no, yeah. It, it, it's it's not even. It's not anything like that. It's just me thinking. I do hope they flesh out this jank, because. Not flesh it out, sorry, what, polish it. What a brilliant set of words you just said then. I hope they polish this jank. Flesh out this jank. <laughs> Flush out this jank is what I yeah, should get say. Get yeah, get get punk. Think, get out of I here. Think, I just think it looks like it could break my immersion at times. I think I'm used to playing games that are very story-driven as well, where the story aspects of it are really good. Like... You know the vocal performance is really good, and the dialogue's mm. really compelling, and everything. But I'm not, I'm not expecting that from Cyberpunk. I, I, I I'm expecting it to be a bit cheesier. Um, yeah, but it's, which I think it will be, in, in, in you know, intentionally. I, I think, um, I think my, my hype levels are actually surprisingly in check. I would say. Uh, yeah, I think mine have pretty leveled out. A, a good amount. There's only so excited you can be for a game that's been delayed about a billion times. I don't. I can't actually yeah. maintain that for that for that as long as I as they've had this game being hyped up for. Yeah, but I do. I, mean, I do think I, I'm excited enough to want to at least try. Uh, it's annoying because if it was in September, I could have done. But November's really busy at work. But. I want oh, to put some time off, at least a day. Um, Just call in sick for like a month. There's not. It's not often these days where there's a game that I'm. I feel that. Yeah. It's just it's story driven and like oh I love I just no I can't wait to right. get my teeth into it. <laughs> yeah, you are right though. Far too many people think it's futuristic GTA. It's not GTA. Don't expect GTA. They've said that so many times. I don't. I really don't want it to be like that. No, I don't. <laughs> it's just a bug. If you want GTA, just buy the next gen GTA game. GTA five. 
They, they yeah, even but... they even said you they they said you can play it like GTA Five, and then they clip loads of websites just clip that part of the quote. And yeah, then that's what people were saying. Like, oh, it's like GTA Five. Yeah, it's no. done. You're not going to get into you, police chases and stuff. You can. They said you can play it like GTA Five, and then they said, but you wouldn't want to, and it'd be very difficult to do so. Like, yeah. what they mean by that is. You can you can go around killing things and you have doing choices, that. and that's mm. that's that's it. It's a choice. It's not. Yeah, it's an RPG. You know. I just yeah. I, oh, there's. A, I will say though, there was a cool um, image captured of um, the skill tree. Oh yeah. And from if this, it seems it seems like it's vast. That's good. Uh, there's like like a lot. There's like mm. a, a several large skill trees, and I, I love skill trees. I do enjoy a skill tree, yeah. But yeah, like you say, I mean, maintaining an exceedingly high expectation and hype of Cyberpunk 2077 for such a lengthy period of time is like, uh, it's like maintaining a slight level of hype for the Uncharted movie for an even longer <laughs> period of time. <laughs> Oh my god, sorry, I can't... I'm just... In my head, I'm just thinking of... When I say... I, I mean it, my hype genuinely isn't checked, but this is this is like my most anticipated game for years, so... Yeah. I am so excited to, like, get that... get that title screen up. I'm going to have, like... Yeah, I, I actually always just, get that. I remember when I got Skyrim, man oh, alive. I, Jack, I actually... I have, like one of those permanent etched in memories of that. Yeah. Exactly. Me too. Thing. Me too. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it was such a moment for me. I was just like, it was, it Whoa, was. There are go. certain games when opening up the title screen for the first time is like, whew. yeah, man. So, just, I, I, I'm, I'm just I'm going to have my beer. I'm going to like, <laughs> it's going to be some snacks. It's gonna be midnight. They better they better do a, a preload of it. Midnight release. It's gonna be an exciting time in the world for sure. Should we wrap it up there? Let's wrap it up. It's been a long one. We've had a lot to talk about, a lot catching up. Well, join us next week, everyone, when we uh talk about our top ten best video game loading screens. And uh <laughs> our top five picks for better choices to play Victor Sullivan in the Uncharted movie. Anything else to add, Jamie? You get a bit of guacamole, Lee. You get a little bit of sour cream. Mm. You put this podcast in with that. Yep. Bit of bit of peppers and onions and salsa. Of course. Get your flour, uh, uh, tortilla. Roll it up. That's the podcast. <laughs>